Thank you for coming to my talk on redefining the textbook and embedding calculators for online exams. I'm Larry Green, and I teach at Lake Tahoe Community College, and I have been involved and dedicated to open educational resources for decades. To me, that is the most important thing is to make sure that all students, no matter where they come from, can afford their education and get their degree as long as they work hard. What I want to think about is a textbook. The old textbook has been around for, I don't know, a thousand years or so. And the question is, is that the right thing in today's era? It worked great a thousand years ago, but things are different now. But now there is so much more than just a static textbook for students to learn from. So in particular, students want multimedia and they want interactivity. So how can OER solve this? And my feeling is OER is perfect for this idea. And the reason is that we can put together different OER components that are already out there and we can add in our own flavor. So in particular, we could take an old textbook, we could put in videos, we could put in visualizations, we could even put in games. So what I have done is come up with all these other pieces that the students can learn from. And fortunately, what I've been using lately is LibreText, which is a main tool out there that makes it much easier for all of us to be able to take a textbook that is static and customize it in our own flavor with videos, visualizations, and games. So let's play. Okay, so here's the textbook that I have customized. I didn't write the textbook because OER is not about one person writing a book anymore. My feeling is OER is about community. So what I did is I started out with a wonderful book, a static book, by um, Alowski and Dean, great people, and they wrote a really nice book. They put it in OpenStax. And what I have done is I have taken that book and I put in my own flavor and I put in multimedia and I put in interactivity. So how did I do that? Well, I use what's called the remixer in LibreText. We don't really have time to go over all the details, but if you click on the remixer, then this is what it looks like. And there are tutorials on how to use it. And basically, you can take any book or multiple books, put them together, put pieces of it, customize, change things however you want, and make your own book out of it. And with open educational resources, that's the O, the open, in what we're talking about, is that you can take other people's stuff and then remix them, put your own flavor into the book. So in particular, here's an example. So this is, again, a statistics book, and you could do this for any book. And this is a section on a single population mean using the student T distribution. Again, if you're not familiar with all statistics, that's fine. I just want to kind of show you how it looks. This is the OpenStax books, and this is just a copy of what the book looks like until all of a sudden we get down here, and I put my own little program in here. And now we can visually compare the student's T distribution with the normal distribution. What I can do is I can move the slider and say, ha ha, if I have n equals 19, degrees of freedom 18, all of a sudden, it looks very similar. But if we have degree of freedom very small, like just three, all of a sudden there's a bit of error. And a student will be able to play around with this and get a feel, instead of just read about it, but truly get a feel, an interactive feel on how this works. And then if you read more in the book, here's more of the original static book. But I put videos in. And this is how to use a TI-84 calculator in case that's what you want to use for statistics. And it's embedded. Here it is. This is a video. And I'm not going to get into it, but you can watch the videos yourself. The students can watch it as they're reading and watching and interacting. And I've done a little more. If you scroll down more, now we can look at a confidence interval over statistics 
and they could put in, I don't know, 54, X bar might be 38, maybe the standard deviation is 7, and let's make the confidence level 0 0.95. And there we go. And they have their own built-in calculator as they're reading the book. But it's not just sitting and reading anymore. It's full interactivity. And that's how I think the world should be now. Because students deserve to be able to have the best experience possible. But students do more than just calculate or move a slider along. Our students, a lot of them, they're gamers. So I decided to make some games. So here's an example in the regression equation. And again, here's a calculator where they can look at the scatter plot and they can look at the data in the equation, but they could also go in and play a game. This is called the shoot down money at the correct correlation game. So in this game, what's going to happen is a correlation is going to be given. There's going to be money flying in, as we see, and the student has to go and shoot down these dollar bills. And each time they shoot a bill, a dot is going to happen where that dollar bill got shot. And the goal is to have all the dots be in such a way so that the correlation, the R, is negative 0.5. And as they have more and more points, new R is going to be formed. And if they can get within 0.1 of 0.5, they win the game and they get the big money. Of course, just as a gamer, not real money. So let's start. So I want negative 0.5. So I'm going to move my arrow maybe over here somewhere. I'm going to shoot. And I got one, okay? One point, not much going on. Let's try again. Let's shoot. And there's another one. Uh, my correlation's one, not quite what I wanted, but it's only two points. And they're gonna learn that with two points, the correlation's always one because they're gonna play this game a bunch. So they gotta shoot some more. I'm at negative 0.91, I gotta do more. So then I keep going. I shoot again. I made it! Congratulations! The correlation matches, and then the student can see, after playing a game, that these dots are in such a way that the correlation is pretty close to negative 0.5. And the student's going to learn in a modern way. A lot of our students, that's how they learn. And what's nice is students can learn in whichever they, way they want. So I have made sure that there is enough information here so that however students learn, they'll be able to figure out and understand correlation. All right, and there's other games. For example, there's the Be the Player or the Casino Expected Value game. Now, I'm in Tahoe, we're a gambling town, and a lot of our students will work in the casinos, hopefully they don't gamble too much. Here's an example where you'll be given the rules to a randomly selected hypothetical casino game. Then compute the expected value, and based on the result, choose to be either the casino or the player. Then 10,000 games will be played, and you'll win or lose that amount of money. My idea is let's make it interactive, fun, multimedia, so that our students in the modern world can learn in the best way possible. But there's one other thing that I've had to deal with, and that is calculators. When I teach online, for example, the old-fashioned way of calculating was with these handheld calculators. Those were great when I was a student, but I'm an old guy now. Nowadays, they should have online calculators. And not only that, online calculators are free. I have created calculators, I'm a programmer too, for every possible type of thing you're gonna be doing in the class. And I have embedded it into our LMS. So here's an example of a test question. Again, I'm not gonna read the whole question, but the idea is you're gonna need a calculator, but when they do this, this is Canvas, there's the calculator embedded right in for them. And all they have to do is they can click on the type of calculator that they want for this problem because I want them to know what type of problem it is after reading the question. Now this one happens to be an expected value problem as we had just seen the type of thing before. It does say calculate the expected value. And if they click expected value in standard deviation number six, embedded right in the test is the calculator. And they just type in their x, their p of x, hit calculate, and it'll give them the expected value in standard deviation. And that's the modern world. So OER works perfect in the modern world. So hopefully you'll take away some positive ideas for your students from this video. And thank you for caring about our students. If you have any questions or if you need any help with this stuff, or if you have an idea and you want me to program it, I'll even do that, especially in math. You can email me at drlarrygreen 
at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to work with you to make OER work in an interactive way for your students. Thank you.